The aim of today's episode is very straightforward. And it came to me after I recorded yesterday's. Because yesterday's I covered the exact number of reps that you need to be doing to build muscle. But I realized that I glazed over a very important topic, a bigger topic, a topic that actually if we solve that problem, I think more people are gonna benefit. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. And the aim of talking about this is to save you years, if not decades, from wasted time, money, energy, effort, and despair from not making gains in the gym. Just to give you a little bit of context, this here was a picture of me when I was 17 years old, super skinny kid, and then this was a picture of me when I was 30 years old. So fast forward 13 years, and as you can see, I put on a little bit of timber. I wasn't obese, but considering I was six foot three at the time, I was overweight, and I hide it quite well because of my height. But trust me when I say this, I was not in good shape. My mental health was also completely in the toilet, and what's probably not uncommon is throughout that time, I had actually been training. I had been going to the gym pretty regularly. I'd say on average, three times a week, I had been doing what I believed and I truly believed was the right thing to do. And I was getting bigger, but obviously I was just getting fatter. And so I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was ticking every box. But if I look at it, really, I wasn't progressively overloading. I wasn't training with any kind of intensity. I wasn't really focusing on doing compound movements. I wasn't following any plan. My intent, uh, the you know, my frequency of training. Yes, I was training three times a week, and people can get incredible results on three times a week, but only if they are training with a plan, with intensity, with compound movements, etc., etc., etc. And I wasn't doing any of those things, so I wasn't getting any gains. I wasn't getting any results. All I was doing was putting on body fat, and there is a direct proportion, as new studies have shown, that being overweight and not exercising properly with intensity is linked to. Me, uh, mental health issues. So it's no surprise really that I ended up absolutely at wit's end and depressed turn 30. But the point is, this is a picture of me which I took yesterday. I have just turned 36, so this is really five years later. And as you can see, now I'm in pretty good shape, I would say. Now you would think, as a man, once you sort of passed 33, I think, technically, is the sort of average peak testosterone level. My looks should begin to fade. I should, be get, I should begin to get weaker. And I certainly shouldn't be continuing to put on muscle and size. However, I seem to be defying physics and biology here, don't I? Or am I? I don't think I am. And I'm getting to the point here. <laughs> the point is, is that the years I spent wasted... Yes, it was because I was not following a plan, I wasn't progressively overloading, I wasn't training with intensity, and I wasn't um, doing compound movements. But I believe the biggest factor which held me back and which held, holds the vast majority of men back is ego lifting. Not actually contracting the muscle that you're trying to grow. Because ego lifting does what well, it prevents muscular hypertrophy, which is the process of tearing the muscle fibers, breaking it down so that they can grow back stronger. And it encourages injury because it moves the contraction away from the muscle that you are trying to target and more likely puts it onto joints, ligaments and tendons, which then just gets smashed to pieces and gets injured. And of course that comes from a breakdown of form. But I think before we talk about this a little bit more, we need to understand why we do ego lifting because I am a big believer that if we understand why we do something then we set ourselves up to actually be able to change that habit and behavior and I think it's pretty simple and we have to really go deep on this literally because I didn't mean that but it's quite funny how I've said that because all of this almost all of life comes back to sex because whether you're straight or gay everybody is trying to have sex it's a status game. And we believe that going to the gym and swinging the weights around is going to impress the person that you are trying to mate with. Again, whether that's same sex or, or opposite sex. And so that's why we do it. I think that's why we are driven to do it. 
because we believe that if we do this, we will impress that person and they will want to have sex with us. Here's the thing. That photo, I'll put it back up, that I showed you earlier. I posted that on Instagram yesterday. And what's funny <laughs> is that all but one of the millions of people <laughs> who liked it, all but one of the likes came from men. Now, I am incredibly proud of the physique that I have developed. I've worked incredibly hard for it. And I feel like I should have the right to, yeah, show that off. That's effectively what I'm doing. But let's be real. When we post this stuff, I'm a straight man. We hope that it's going to attract straight females. But it's quite an introspective exercise to post that. And it's more of a reminder because it's not the first time I've done it, but it's just a realization that women don't actually care. Because what people we are trying to attract are actually attracted to is not necessarily your size or your strength or your looks or your money. We believe, we're, we're told to believe it's that. And that's why we do the things we do and we behave the way we did. I mean, put it this way. If you took women off of planet Earth, <laughs> and let's conservatively estimate that 80% of men are straight heterosexual, that they wouldn't do anything. We'd sit around all day, we'd get fucked up, we, we wouldn't even fight, we'd have nothing to fight over. We'd just play PlayStation, drink beer, and, and just probably die a very uneventful death after a very boring life. <laughs> it's just reality. Everything we do is driven to increase our status. And it's the same when, whether you're gay or straight, because you're still trying to attract higher status men or women. So as men, we are driven to do this. And that is why we ego lift, because we believe that if we do it, and it's deep rooted, even if at our service level, we know it's stupid, we still do it. And I believe that we do it because at a deep rooted level, we believe it is gonna improve our status, which is gonna improve our chances of having more sex. <laughs> but it's not, it's absolutely not. And hopefully, if you, if you agree with me, now you can kind of see where I'm going with this and you're like, he's actually right. This is fucking dumb. Why am I still doing this? And now you can stop. Because the transition between those first two photos that I showed you between 17 and 30, that's exactly what I was doing. That wasn't the only thing I was doing wrong. Full transparency, like I said, I was basically getting everything wrong. But I reckon that even if I hadn't been following a proper plan, but I was, I was really dialed in on every single rep and I wasn't lifting with any ego. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't, got, I wouldn't have got the injuries that I got because I, I haven't had a single injury, a single serious injury from the gym, touch wood, in six years. But in that time, I must have had three or four. The worst being I tore a intercostal muscle just here. An intercostal muscle is in between your rib cages and it sounds like the lyrics of a song, but every breath I took for three weeks hurt. And let me tell you something, you don't realize how much you breathe day to day, but when you've torn an intercostal muscle, you really start to notice it and you breathe a lot. And it was agony. For the first two nights, I didn't sleep, which doesn't help when you don't sleep, um, but it took three weeks for it to heal. Anyway, that was just one of them. There were multiple. I wouldn't have had any of those injuries because I wouldn't have been ego lifting because I wasn't, wouldn't be trying to impress anybody because there'd be no women on the planet. <laughs> so the point of this whole video, especially if you're listening and you're a young guy, I get it because I've done it. But if you look at those photos of me between 30 and 36 today, right now, I'm still not the biggest guy in the world and I'm not trying to claim that I am, but it's absolutely insane to me that I have gotten in better shape when technically I should be in decline. And it pisses me off because <laughs> imagine how much more progress I could have made in my 20s if I hadn't been acting like a complete dickhead. And that's why you look at people, I think the best example is probably Mike Thurston. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've almost certainly heard of him. 
great influencer on, on YouTube, big inspiration of mine, I've followed him for years. And he has constantly had accusations of steroid use. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. Truth be told, I, I think he'd have to be pretty psychotic at this stage to have done steroids because he is so vehemently adamant that he hasn't and is willing to go through testing. Now, the testing doesn't necessarily prove too much because it would just prove that he's not on them now. But I actually believe the guy. And the reason I believe the guy is because from what I can tell in his 20s, he wasn't ego lifting. I'm sure he was a little bit, but for the most part, he was training how I should have trained. And he says this a lot, but I reckon he should push this narrative even harder. So Mike, if you're listening, push the fucking narrative harder, bro. Because the years I wasted, the years of wasted potential angers me. It makes me furious. But if you're a 20 year old guy watching this now and you've randomly stumbled across this in the algorithm, then it's destiny, it's fate. My brother, my friend, stop ego lifting. Drop the weight by 50% and dial in. Because here was the thing. We ego lift because we think other people care. No one cares. And if they don't, if that's why we do it and they don't care, then there's absolutely no reason to do it. Think about that. We do it because we think they care or because we want them to care. They don't care so that there is no point doing it. So what you are doing by definition is absolutely pointless. So not only is it pointless, but it is actually negatively affecting you because you could make insane gains if you actually focused in on every single rep, I promise you, take this advice. If you need to, if you know, you have to have a real honest conversation with yourself that you are ego lifting on any of your lifts. Tomorrow, no, fuck that, today, go to the gym, drop the weight by 50%, and I want you to focus on every single rep to the point where you can feel that muscular contraction. What I am saying is not new, but hopefully the frame of how I have said it to you, how I've justified it to you, has sold it to you a little bit. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to tell you not to ego lift because I want you to get as big and as strong and as sexy and as powerful as you possibly can. And you've got a much easier and better chance of doing it in your 20s than you do in your 30s. Maybe I'll get lucky and maybe as I make more progress towards 40, I'll continue to get bigger and stronger. Who knows? It's gonna be harder, I know that, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> anyway, I do hope this video was useful. If it was, give it a like, give it a share, tell all your mates, stop ego lifting. They are literally wasting their time. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow.